if you're part of the Masters of the Universe collecting community, then She-Ra is probably also high on your list. And getting She-Ra characters into the classic line was rewarding, but not without its challenges. Was this because the content was just too childish, full of gags and jokes and not enough action? Was it a lack of a comical sidekick? Oh, no, that definitely wasn't the case, because the She-Ra series had, what, count them, like, four, three, I don't know, a bunch of them, and... Well, it was time to get them into classics, so looking at Lookie, yep, that's that character that's always hiding out in the background of photos and paintings and still shots, and then of course Cowl, we all know, is definitely not Orko's love interest, despite fan art telling you the opposite story. Put him together and, oh, yeah, it's mischief all around. Well, okay, but it makes a nice price point, and it's a way of getting both of them in the line. Now, Lookie had never been in the line before, so that's a whole other thing to look at. Oh, look what I just did right there. Cowell, on the other hand, his uh, partner in crime, shall we say, put together in a blister simply because of price value. Well, he is a owl and koala, hence Cowell. Oh, weren't those she designers back in the 80s just brilliant? Well, it's actually a really cute name. Now, Cowell is most usually associated with Bo. He is Bo's sort of, you know, animal, I guess. But, you know, the two of them do get together and create their fair share of mischief, both on the show and off. And nothing was more mischievous than the vintage figures of both of these characters, because, I don't know, one is creepier than the last. They weren't your standard She-Ra figure. They were, well, we'll get into that. Especially because when you're dreaming of the perfect Cowell figure you got to deal with a lot of color issues. See, Cowell's been represented and shown officially in a few different colors. There is definitely much more of a pinkish hue to his fur. There is clearly a yellow version. There's clearly a brownish-red version. And all of that was a challenge, and one that we knew we wanted to include in classics, which is why we knew from day one, well, there's going to be more than one Cowell. We were able to pay for the tooling in this weapons pack, and we knocked out the yellow version, which, you know, when you get a combination koala and owl that comes with shields, you can't go wrong. I mean, it's better than this, right? Ah, I know, the, uh, the vintage figures, what can I say? There is some odd reference here and there to doing kind of the more pinkish version, but because the original figure was yellow, it kind of obligated us to do a yellow version, shall we say. Hey, when you can get two decos out of a tool, it's a huge cost savings. What can I say? Everyone does it. And as far as characters not looking like their source material, I point you no further than this Seinfeld action figure that looks nothing like the character from Jurassic Park. All right, now why was the color changed? Well, pastels are really big with the female audience that the show was aimed at, even though it got a lot of boys interested in it as well. And the yellow figure lived on, even though it never appears yellow in the content, there's definitely a special place in our heart for toys versus style guides. So yeah, we definitely looked at everything, and the Horseman even at one point created, well, actually it was the very first version of Cowell that they painted up, was a pink version. And we looked at it, and we're like, pink? I don't even think, you, but we did find reference, there was times that Cowell was pink. But in the end, we went with the style guide version for the second one. So since we eyeballed it with yellow for the first version, now we can have the official colors with the PMS callouts, and everyone gets a cowl they can be happy with. Now, Lookie, on the other hand, was the highlight of the set because we didn't have a Lookie before. It was our first Lookie, and sadly, or maybe not sadly, our last. I mean, how many Lookie figures do you need? Although, can you imagine, like, a fully articulated, highly articulated Lookie? He shows up a lot, like, a real lot, in the background, in lots of She-Ra content. That's his whole thing. You're always trying to find him. And then he says, here I am, and gives a moral. See how they worked that in? It was all about having ways around the FCC regulations. Now, Lookie does come from a species of, you know, fellow Lookies. No, that's not what they're called. And his vintage toy, yeah, I tried to prep you for this one. It is off the chart creepy. I guess they were going for something like a like a troll mixed with a She-Ra figure, and I don't know, I guess moving eyes is attractive to some little children. I found this to be one of the creepier vintage figures, and I'm glad that the version from Classics could be more screen accurate. I do love the little sidekicks. They're one of my favorites. 
And while there might have been some reuse out of Lookie with doing alternate decos, we really was just grateful to even get to this because getting Broom, Cowl, Lucky, all of the sidekicks from Princess of Power in the line was a huge accomplishment. Now the question is, should we have done more of a vintage Lucky figure replicating those eyes and crazy hair? The answer is no. No, no, no. We, we shouldn't have done that. But he turned out to be a great figure, and he's still one of my favorites. I particularly enjoy hiding him in my wife's china closet for any, you know, kids who come by on Thanksgiving. They're like, wait, look at that.